everybody. Welcome. It's Harlan here, and I am so glad that you dropped by. Tonight is the first of a few master classes on diabetes and healing your blood sugar, lowering your blood sugar naturally. We're going to be sharing a lot more information with you. But I wanted to start with this masterclass simply because the information in it is so shocking, absolutely shocking. And as a matter of fact, some people might not even believe the information that I'm going to share. It is definitely different. And a lot of people just don't, will not believe what's going on. Historically, as well as today. So thank you very much for joining me. The first record of diabetes was in ancient Egypt when papyrus texts mentioned diabetes. It became associated with sugar about 500 years before the Common Era when physicians in India noted a condition that they called madhuma, which stands for honey urine, because ants were attracted to the urine of someone with diabetics because of the high sugar content of their urine. In the year 250 before the Common Era, a Greek physician coined the term diabetes, which meant to siphon because people with diabetes tended to show excessive urination. Now, over the years, not much changed from the medieval period, the Renaissance period, who was a reason they called them the Dark Ages, because there were very little advances in science. Let's bring that up to the 19th century. And in the 19th century, a French physician discovers the pancreas and the role of the liver in, um, in glucose. And there was a relationship between the pancreas and diabetes. Well, what would happen was in those days, I want you to understand how things have changed. In those days, if someone was diabetic, it was a death sentence for them. If they were type 1 diabetic, today we call it juvenile onset, although it can occur later in life too, type 1 diabetes, there was no cure. If you had type 1 diabetes, that was it. You had a year or two. And then it was, unfortunately, it was all over. There was no treatment for type 1 diabetes. But they noted that there were two types of diabetes. There was type 1 and something else, which we refer to type 2. They referred to as older person's diabetes. And in, e in each of these cases... The situation was that the person was overweight and developed diabetes. Again, there was no treatment for it. So if you were diagnosed with diabetes, type 1 or type 2, it was pretty much game over. At the end of the 19th century, the... Um, physicians began to notice that there might be there might be a connection between what you eat and diabetes and they began to speculate that changing the diet might just um, allow someone to live a longer life they didn't have any systematic studies. They would study one 
patient at a time, see what they could do with one patient, and if it was successful, try it on another patient, and then another patient. But it wasn't like they were controlled studies. They weren't dealing with large numbers. They were dealing with one person at a time. Now get this treatment. This is the first treatment that was actually known to work. A little bizarre today, but what they did was they told um, someone with type 2 diabetes to start eating the junky parts of the animals, like, like the kidneys and the intestines. And they said, and eat rancid meat. Sounds delicious, huh? The kidneys, the intestines, rancid meat. And since in those days, the basics of eating included bread and butter, the patient was limited to two slices of bread and butter a day. Other than that, it was the meat, and particularly the rancid meat. Well, oh, he was, and he was allowed, he was one meal a day, he was allowed to make a broth of the meat and eat that instead. Much to their surprise, he lived longer than other diabetics. After a few years, they occurred, it occurred to them that, you know what? Maybe he doesn't need to eat rancid meat. Maybe he could just eat regular meat. And instead of eating the garbage parts of the animal, maybe he would just eat meat. They even allowed him a third slice of bread. But because his carb intake, and they didn't realize this at the time, was so low, he lived years longer than any other diabetic patient. And they went, aha. And they started prescribing this diet. Today, we would call it almost a carnivore diet. But people with diabetes stopped dying and started living for years longer than expected. And they began researching and they began altering and playing with the diet. And they were showing progress until the early 1920s. The early 1920s was a time of scientific breakthroughs. In 1921 and 1922, the keto diet was discovered. The keto diet was discovered as a way of treating children with epilepsy. Well, within a year or two of discovering the keto diet and having used it on epileptic children, uh, which it worked in a fantastic manner, they discovered a medicine to treat epilepsy. And once they discovered the medicine to treat epilepsy, who needed the diet anymore? And so the keto diet went into hibernation until in the 1960s, Dr. Robert Atkins brought it back from total um, loss to people. But at that same time, doctors discovered how to produce insulin. And by giving diabetic patients insulin, they found that they could control their diabetes. Well, doctors at that time were really proud of themselves for discovering these things. And instead of working on something that would help cure diabetes, they were content with treating diabetes. By treating diabetes, it meant giving people insulin. Now they noticed 
that while they were giving insulin to diabetic patients, their blood sugar very often over time kept rising. Their A1C, their hemoglobin A1C, which is the measure of blood sugar, sugar in your blood over a three-month period, which has become the standard for measuring whether someone is pre-diabetes or diabetic today, kept going up even though they were getting insulin. In other words, the body was used to what was going on um, and the insulin need increased. And so there was more and more and more insulin injections going on and that's how they controlled diabetes. Dieting was not a thing until some doctors said, well, wait a minute, we had those old experiments with a super low carb diet, maybe we should bring it back. And believe me, this isn't going where you think. There's no happy ending to this. So they started working with people on low carb diets. And even though they did not have packaged foods back then, to take someone from a high carb diet to a low carb diet was not done easily. They didn't understand what the body was doing going into ketosis. They didn't understand the long-term benefits because there were no scientific studies. And therefore, doctors would say, okay, I want you to cut out your bread and butter or bread and margarine since it was after World War II. We want you to cut out rice. We want you to cut out potatoes. And we just want you to eat meats. And their definition of carbs were vegetable carbs. We want you to do this. And guess what? People were not compliant. People did not um, go ahead and do what the doctor said. By the way, I don't know if you could see it. I don't know if you're on your phone, but we do have a chat that's down at the bottom. I don't know if you could see it on your phone, but there is a chat. Let me type something in the chat here, which is, hi there. And if you have a question, please feel free to type it in. I'd love, I'll glance over from time to time to see if there are any questions there. So they are now preparing people with diet and they're finding huge numbers of people are non-compliant. They're just not doing what the doctor said. And here comes the punchline. Instead of figuring out a way of helping people return to a normal lifestyle, they said, okay, they don't want to change the way they eat anyway. Let's just start inventing medicines to lower their blood sugar and let them eat whatever they want. That is the medical treatment of diabetes until today. We're going to come up with medicines to lower blood sugar, regardless of the side effects. We're going to come up with medications that people can take because in medicine we trust, and that will help keep people with diabetes alive. But wait a minute. If you can't do anything about the diabetes, about the source of diabetes, about the lifestyle in diabetes, then 
This came up with the term that is used today by nearly all doctors and by the American Diabetes Association, and that is diabetes cannot be cured. Just like they say, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, once a diabetic, always a diabetic. But wait, what if you have somebody who was diabetic and they lower their HA1C to below the diabetic line and they lowered it further below the pre-diabetic line, by any stretch of the imagination, they should be non-diabetic. No, no, say the doctors, because at any moment they could sit down and start scarfing down bag after bag of potato chips and ice cream, ice cream and potato chips, pizza and ice cream and soda, and then the diabetes will come back. And since there's a possibility of it coming back, there's no cure for diabetes. Woo! Can you believe that? So doctors today and the official position of the medical industry today is diabetes cannot be cured. However, there are a bunch of crazy people bunch of crazy people like me, even some crazy doctors who said, you know what? Our patients are lowering their HA1C. They're no longer diabetic. There is a cure for diabetes. No, says the doctors. They aren't cured because it can come back. But now there is a new term that is being floated. It's kind of an in-between between those who say cure and those who say can't be cured. And the term that is becoming acceptable is it's possible to reverse diabetes. You're still a diabetic, but you can reverse your diabetes. Okay, you can reverse your diabetes. And guess what? More and more people are reversing their diabetes. Now, you would think that the medical profession would have caught on by now that it's even possible to um, reverse diabetes. But I have to tell you, the medical profession is reluctant to let go of its dependence on medicine. Now, I have to tell you that I have spoken in my career with keto to tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people with prediabetes and diabetes. And I've spoken personally to thousands of people who got the diagnosis of diabetes, and then I asked the question, what did your doctor tell you to do? And they say they put me on, for example, metformin, and that was it. No advice about eating? No. Nope. No suggestions to talk to a nutritionist? No. Nope. What did they say? just take metformin. Or if the situation was bad enough, they put them on insulin right away and maybe insulin and metformin or any of the other blood sugar dr drugs. But the idea of reversing, curing diabetes with by using nutrition doesn't work, doesn't work, the doctors say. Except the people that have seen it happen time and time and time again. Now, I have to tell you that every time I go on Facebook 
I see the looniest ideas of diabetes cures or lower your blood sugar cures. These are people who only care about making money and they don't care about helping people. Cure diabetes with cinnamon. How many people have seen that? You can reverse diabetes with just adding cinnamon. Eat this cinnamon every day. And then when it turns out that the cinnamon didn't work, oh, it has to be Ceylon cinnamon. Okay, because Ceylon cinnamon has properties that other cinnamon doesn't. Do you know how many people I know who have tried the cinnamon cure and it didn't work? Now the hottest thing is cinnamon gummies. The cinnamon gummies are cinnamon and sugar. Oh, that's going to help reverse diabetes, having sugar every day. Here, have two or three of these little cinnamon candies. That'll help. Yeah, it may help your pocketbook. It's not going to help people. Or some of the other things that are absolutely shocking. Absolutely shocking that I'm seeing like beets. Um, okay, Barbara says chat is disabled. They need to chat into the Q&A. Okay, well, I don't see a Q&A. Barbara, where's the Q&A? Or that's what you typed it in. So Barbara says, chat is disabled. They need to type in the Q&A. It's at the bottom. Oh, there it is. Instead of chat, it said there is chat, but there's also Q&A. Okay. So if you're on a computer, you may see a Q&A. And that's great. Thank you for that, Barbara. Thank you a lot. Now, Barbara has been working with me for a while, and she has lost about 90 pounds. She has, Barbara, what's your, A? what was your A1C when you started? Do you remember? Since you're the one who knows how to type it in. What was your A1C when you started? 6.5. And what is it today? Five point two, and we talked about you using some um, special things that I advised last week. Some things that you never, had, probably never had heard of before. Um, did you get a chance to measure your blood sugar then, or just how much weight went down because of those supplements? What did? What was the result? Waiting for her to type in her answer. Must be a long one. Her sugar is lower. And what about the weight? six pounds in the last week. Why am I, the non-doctor, able to help people dramatically lower their HA1C, their fasting blood sugar, and their weight without prescribing medicines? Now, I was telling you about the scams that I'm seeing the cinnamon gummies, the, um, the beets. I, I don't mean beets to a drum. I mean eating beets as an answer to blood sugar, when beets are high in blood sugar. Or sour uh, cranberry juice, or sour cherry juice, or celery juice. They are preying on people and want to keep them as a constant money machine, generating income. And frankly, it makes me sick 
that people could be so evil and so cruel. And Barbara adds on that there were no changes in diet at all. It's just that there are certain things that doctors don't want to talk about that are powerful remedies that they don't want to share. Again, if you aren't clear on it, doctors believe that the average diabetic does not want to change their lifestyle. The average diabetic does not want to give up what they are eating. In the words of doctors with the, associated with the American Diabetes Association, the average person does not want to change. They do not want to give up their treats. They do not want to give up their processed foods. All they want to do is have an insulin injection. And now, in desperate moves, they keep inventing more and more medication. Diabetics over the past two years have noticed that the price of diabetes, of diet, of insulin for diabetics went up through the roof, scandalously. And people could not afford insulin, and people died. Diabetes is the root cause of so many people's deaths. I did an email about Elvis. Elvis was diabetic. He died at age 42. Elvis had untreated diabetes. When he died, the medical examiner put down that the issue was a heart attack. And it's gone down in history that Elvis died of a broken heart. Yeah. He died because his body had become so toxic because of diabetes that his basic his gut just solidified and he wasn't able to go to the bathroom he died of a heart attack straining on the toilet because his system was completely impacted due to all of the drugs that he was taking and my friend who was dr larry rubel was the leading GI doctor in Memphis, saw Elvis and examined him and said, Mr. Presley, I can tell exactly what drugs you are taking. They have shut down your system. We need to treat the root cause, which is your diabetes, and then you will get better. And Elvis's henchmen, who were known as the Memphis Mafia, did not want to hear this. And they lifted Elvis up out of his chair, hustled him out of the office, back to Graceland, where he died just a few months from then, because of his untreated diabetes. Now, on the other extreme in Facebook, there are a lot of groups about diabetes, and lowering blood sugar. And I'm in many of them. Why am I in them? Not to find information, but just to see what people are talking about. And it reminds me of the early days of the keto groups, where people would say, oh, if I cheat for one day and I have um, an ice cream, it's not going to do anything for me. I'll just get back on the wagon. Now, I understand that. But to tell people who are diabetic, who have been diagnosed with diabetic, who have a, a high HA1C, that it's okay to cheat, is like playing Russian roulette at someone else's expense. And at the other day, there was a whole discussion about whether or not it was okay to cheat. 
And I said, your life is on the line. You cheat. You don't know what is going to happen when, on what day. Why would you do that? And a woman wrote back to me very, very arrogantly. And she said, Harlan, my wife still can't believe that I did this. Harlan, if you tell me that I can never have ice cream again, and she's not talking about keto ice cream either, I can never have ice cream again, I'm going to laugh. And my response was, laugh now, die later. I don't want that on my conscience. When I see someone doing something that can harm them, I'm going to speak up. I used to be a principal in the school. And when you're a principal in a school, guess what? You are not the most popular person in the school. Nobody likes being told what to do. Absolutely no one. Kids don't want to be told to do homework. Teachers don't want to be told to grade homework. Parents don't want to be told that there are rules that people can follow, that have to follow. Kid has to dress this way or that way. No, you can't drop them off at school whenever you feel like. Yes, if they miss a test because they come to school every day late at 1030, they have failed the test. Oh, it makes you really popular. Well, I'm used to it. And now when I talk to people about diabetes, I have only one goal, and that is helping them reverse their diabetes. And diabetes can be reversed but we do things in stages. Now we are entering a period of time that I'm calling the 14 day lower your blood sugar challenge. And let me tell you what that's about. First of all, number one is the group is called naturally lower your blood sugar. Naturally lower your blood sugar. And you are, if you are a diabetic, you are invited to join that group. The recording of this webinar is going to be there. And I'm going to be dropping information starting tomorrow on things that you can do every single day that is going to begin the process of lowering your blood sugar. We're going to start with a tea every morning. Tastes delicious. Really tastes good. This tea will start detoxing your body and begin the process of lowering your blood sugar. I'm going to recommend some supplements to you. I don't sell these supplements. It's not my business but I'm going to recommend them to you because they work. Right now, and this may shock you, that just like Barbara said, if you make these changes to your life, we're going to start with the T, we're going to start with detoxing your body, and then we're going to move on to lowering your blood sugar, you're going to start to notice your numbers going down. Now, it goes without saying that I'm not an MD. It would be great if you have a good relationship with your doctor, with your endocrinologist, with your nutritionist, you let them know what you are doing. Why? It is possible, even if unlikely, that you may be allergic to one of the things I'm going to suggest. 
I don't know your medical history, but your doctor does. And your doctor may say, you know what? That's not such a good idea for you. So I'm going to share information with you, but it's your responsibility. It is your responsibility to discuss this with your doctor so that you make sure that it is the right move for you. Now, I'm going to be sharing things. Let me take this off and show you. Like this watch. It looks like an ordinary watch. Actually, it looks like a cheap ordinary watch. It's a smart watch. But it has a feature that Apple tried to put on their Apple Watch. They actually did, but they didn't pay to license the feature. And they were sued. And so they had to take it off their watch. And they have not been able to figure out how to do it otherwise. But when I press my watch, one of the things that it does is it checks my blood glucose. And right now, without any sticks, without any needles, without anything at all, it's checking my blood glucose. I had dinner a little while ago. My blood glucose is 138. That is way below what it should be. When I wake up in the morning, my doctor was shocked that my blood sugar was so low. If you are pre-diabetic, your blood sugar in the morning, as soon as you wake up, is over 100. If you're diabetic, it may be over 140. Mine's in the 80s in the morning. So you're going to know very quickly if your um, blood sugar is going down. We can measure it, and you don't have to stick your finger all the time. I hate that. And these watches are very, very inexpensive. Um, they sell for about anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks. And let me tell you, you will learn what foods are blowing up your blood sugar and what foods are not. It becomes almost fun to do it because, again, there's no finger prick. There's no blood. It's just there's your number. Are these numbers accurate? Well, my wife likes taking my blood sugar with the stick, the finger. And we have found that the watch is always within a point or two of the actual blood um, sugar um, meter. Good enough for me. It also takes your blood pressure. I remember being in my doctor's office watching it take my blood pressure and um, and my watch and the doctor's blood pressure machine were just about equal. So I think that this is close enough so that it can be a huge, valuable resource for you. And therefore, Barbara says, I love my watch. And she said, and my blood pressure was the same as at the dock. So the bottom line is we're going to be sharing with you over the next 14 days strategies that you can use now that will help lower your blood sugar. My goal is to demonstrate to you that you can lower your blood sugar so that you are no longer have the numbers of a diabetic, no longer have the numbers of a pre-diabetic. Now, let me say something. This is not a miracle cure. Your numbers are not going to go down from diabetic to less than pre-diabetes overnight. 
But when we get those numbers down, it's going to be part of a profound change in your body that's going to result in you sticking around for a lot longer. And imagine going back to your doctors and having them test your blood work and you discovering how profound the change was. Again, the relationship between the medicines you take that your doctors may have prescribed for you and what you do is between you and your doctor. I would never advise anyone to go off a medication without talking to their doctor. I had a doctor that pulled me off all medications. And within a couple of months, it turned out that that was a really bad idea. And I went back on. I stopped seeing that doctor. Your life is too precious for you not to be working with a doctor. Now, if your doctor is the kind who just said, take them at Foreman and never said anything about it, it might be time for you to start asking around and interviewing other doctors. Because I want a doctor that's going to cooperate with you. I want a doctor that's going to see that when your numbers go down, maybe they need to adjust the dosage. Maybe you don't need it anymore. But I want someone that is going to respect you as an individual and work with you. And finally, there are so many, so many, so many scam items out there. They sound so good. Just take this cinnamon gummy. Just take this. Just take that. There are now headphones that you can wear that will reduce your diabetes. I don't know what they play in the headphones, but there are certainly no scientific studies that say that those do anything. So I'm extremely skeptical of miracle cures. What I am not skeptical of is your ability to change. And that's why I'm here. You know, my daughter is a prosthetist. She fits people with artificial limbs. And she shared with me that every 30 seconds in the world, someone's limbs are amputated because of diabetes. I'm watching my brother, who is a diabetic, whose A1C, by the way, is starting to come down, but it was untreated, poorly treated for years. His A1C was tw close to 12. Now, he started listening to me and what he should eat. His HA1C is down to 7. And we're going to get it down lower. And if I can do it for my brother, I'm going to treat you just like a member of my family. So if you are not a member of that group, please join. I'm going to send this replay out with a link where you can join the group, but only for diabetics, please. If you are pre-diabetic, we will have a special group for you as well. But right now, because lives are on the line, we're focusing on our diabetic friends, our diabetic members, because I won't be happy until you're smiling because your blood sugar levels are lower. This is Harlan Kilstein from Completely Keto. And guess what? I may not be putting you on a keto diet because everybody's an individual and we have to see what you need. I'm going to treat you like that individual and not like 
everybody does the same thing. So join our 14 day challenge. Did I mention that there's no cost to join the 14 day challenge? I hope I did. And I hope that I'll see you on the inside. Thanks everybody. And have a, thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something and have a great night. Bye-bye.